Welcome to Jody's Corner. This is the new segment called DC Rises, celebrating everything DC with the new DCU moving forward, passing the Snyderverse, going into a new universe. We have to get on board together and unite. This is going to be a segment that airs every Wednesday talking about the latest news of the week when it comes to DC content. We're going to start things off with CinemaCon 2023. CinemaCon 2023 was lit, man. They showed a Warner Brothers presentation, Universal presentation, Sony presentation, Paramount presentation. There was a lot of goods to be shown. The color purple was something that really stood out to me, but the overall gist of the reason why I was even going to CinemaCon was for that Flash movie, baby. Yes, I was one of the lucky few who got a chance to see the movie in its entirety for the version that they showed us because I still think that the final version that's gonna be released in theaters is gonna be a little bit different. Maybe some characters missing or characters added than what we're gonna see uh, on June 16th versus what we saw at CinemaCon. I gotta tell you, I love the movie. It's fantastic. A lot of you guys will love and enjoy it. I would say to not put it as high as the greatest comic book movie ever. I feel like that's just fluff. As you guys know, people be hyping up these movies before they come out tremendously, too much to its dismay. I would just say keep your reservations, your expectations, keep them just mannered, normal. You could be excited about the movie and this movie will still make you feel good and it'll really impress you. So shout out to the Flash movie and uh, regarding the villain of the Flash movie, I'm really interested to see what you guys think is the villain of the film because you know, one could say it could be many of things. One could say it's one thing, one could say it's another. I really look forward to seeing what you guys say come June 16th. The Flash movie is coming. This is the start of the DCU. Well, it's more of the end of the Snyderverse and the ushering in to the DCU. Uh, starting with uh, James Gunn's features in 2024. Starting with the first theatrical film, Superman Legacy coming in June of 2025. 220 million dollars, the hype of the Flashpoint movie. It's in the top five most expensive budgets in DC Comics universe history. The record still goes to that Justice League movie, which the budget ballooned once Joss Whedon got on board and had to add some 50 to 70 million dollars extra in reshoots after Zack Snyder exited the platform. You guys know how that went, which started off into the Zack Snyder's Justice League and started the fiasco in the first place. Justice League is still at the top with 300 million. Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice right below that with around 300 million. Black Adam was originally 190 million dollars, the budget. But... They had to do some reshoots, last minute reshoots. Some of those reshoots, you guys know, involved Henry Cavill. They got Henry Cavill at a location somewhere in Europe, uh, put him in the suit, added some CG elements and all that at the very last minute, which made the budget balloon from 190 million to 260 million. Then we have uh, The Dark Knight Rises with 250 million, Man of Steel with 225 million, and right below that at number six, The Flash with 220 million. What that tells me is that Man of Steel and The Dark Knight Rises have higher budgets than Flashpoint. That's okay. Christopher Nolan movies, always high budget because there's always much more money involved with casting, with the cinematography, with real action, real life, set pieces, stunts, explosions, real. Man of Steel, we understand why that had such a, a high budget because there was just amazing CGI throughout that movie. Still has some of the best action of any superhero movie to this day. Man of Steel is a fantastic action movie about a man who's an alien who comes to Earth that's not named Kryp Kryptonian uh, Kal-El. $225 million. Back in 2013, adjusted for inflation is over $250 million when you think about it. So it's really up there around with Black Adam. What surprises me the most and why this is really news Black Adam's $260 million budget, $40 million more than Flashpoint. That's what got people feeling some type of way because Black Adam doesn't look like a $260 million budgeted movie, does it? Now, I like Black Adam. I thought it had some of the best action sequences of any superhero movie, and I stand by that to this day. We all understand that Black Adam didn't have a great story. He didn't have great characters like that, but this is really much about the action, and that's where a lot of the budget went. But $260 million, bruh? Over $220 million for Flashpoint. And see, and knowing how I've seen both of them, Flashpoint action is better than Black Adam's action. That's how I feel about it. And to know that it's $240 million more than Flash's budget, 
That's kind of tough. That's a tough pill to swallow, man. Other news. Did you guys know that Michael Keaton is now not only the greatest Batman of all time for me after watching Flashpoint, but now he's also canon into the main universe of Batman. He was in Batman number 135. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Keaton Batman showed up in one of the alternate universes where I believe Batman was chasing down a uh, red mask and he had this t uh, time porter teleport multiversal thing and followed him into a universe. And one of the universes that followed he followed him into was Michael Keaton's Batman from the 1990s. But, you know, obviously it's a 2023 version. I think that that's lit, bro. Michael Keaton officially being canonically added into the universe, even though it's through a multiverse ways. It's just good to see Michael Keaton in comic book form. God dang, look how he looks in that suit. Look how big he is. If you look at the look at the look at the, the the adjustment in scale. Look how much bigger he is in that Batman. Golly. That's a Robert Pattinson Batman right there. Michael Keaton Batman, Batman right there. Big and yoke and iconic and epic, bro. I just think that that's fire, bro. Shout out to DC Rising because it's rising. On to some other news. Michael Shannon almost didn't appear in the Flashpoint movie. That's right. Michael Shannon showed true allegiance to Zack Snyder because he said he wasn't going to do any of the Flashpoint stuff without Zack Snyder's blessing because he did not like the way Zack was hoed during the Justice League reshoots. So he showed allegiance because he gave him his start in Man of Steel. He says, uh, quote, I was hesitant. I wasn't really happy about what happened to Zack Snyder in the whole Justice League controversy deal. And I really love Zack. The fact that Zack asked me to play that part to begin with, that's probably the biggest surprise of my career. It almost felt like a practical joke. I was like, you're kidding me, right? He was high over the moon to play General Zod. He was uh, humbled and he appreciates the role of playing General Zod. And I got to tell you, as far as Zack Snyder goes, that is a fantastic casting for General Zod. Michael Shannon as General Zod is still the greatest villain in the DC universe. DC EU, DC anything. Uh, I would say DC EU because Bane is a thing. In the DC EU, Michael Shannon is the greatest DCEU villain. And that's just how I feel about it, bro. He's just that good. So just to, to know that we come so close to him not being in the Flashpoint, it tells volumes, man, how much we, we could have had a totally different movie uh, for Flashpoint. This is some really good news. You got Y'all gonna feel this. You guys remember that Tenehisi Coates uh, anti-fake woke Superman black movie Val Zod version? That was coming out along with Michael B. Jordan's version, Calvin Ellis. You know that we had two black Superman being made? Well, we got some news. Big Daddy Cock James Gunn has officially put down what he has planned for the Tenehisi Coats. He says, quote, if the Tenehisi Coats movie is going to be made, it's going to be Elseworlds. <laughs> Clap it up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> James Gunn basically said, uh-uh. It's an Elseworlds story. If you're going to do a black Superman, that's fine. I got my main story Superman already that's going to come out in June of 2025. If, and he said if another black Superman is going to be made by Tenehisi Coates or Michael B. Jordan or whoever, you best believe that that bad boy is going to be Elseworlds like the rest of the stuff. We're not, that tells me that James has a vision and he's sticking to it. We're not going to have any confusion here. He don't want none of that confusion. You're going to know first and foremost what is the main DC Prime universe and other stuff that's Elseworld, like the Batman universe, Elseworld, like the Joker, Elseworld, like this Tenehisi Coates, if it's made, it will be Elseworld. This comes from James Gunn himself. He spoke about it on Twitter and he says, if that thing is gonna be made, he talked about it being an Elseworld story. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for DC Rises this week. There's a lot more for, to come next week. There's a lot more that I could have put in here this week, but this is like a premiere of DC Rises. Uh, send me your stuff. Discord, put stuff in the DC Rises tab, as you guys know. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hashtag DC Rises. Let them know what time it is. I'm up for the DCU, baby. Let's do it. I'm Jody Joe, and I'm out. Deuces.